Bringing 262 Heavy, wind calm, runway 31 left, clear for takeoff, caution weight turbulence, previous departure, Heavy uh, 777. Hello and welcome aboard. Welcome to Whitman. I think I'm at Whitman Airfield. I was trying to get to a particular airfield, um, but it's not in Flight Simulator X, so there you go. Uh, we are in a very unique aircraft. I've just noticed my pilot is wearing a cowboy hat. Is that not awesome? What other model out there can you get that has a pilot wearing a cowboy hat? Just saying. <laughs> what is this thing? Well, you can look at the description and see it is the Q's XF-11. Okay, what is this thing? <laughs> it was a prototype reconnaissance, photo recon aircraft. Look at it. Is it not crazy? It is not. Is it not awesome? The specs called for a fast, long-range, high-altitude photo recon aircraft. Now, this is obviously a twin boom all metal monoplane with a pressurized crew nacelle. Now that was different. It looks a lot like a P-38 Lightning, except for it has a pressurized crew nacelle, which is completely different. Now, I want to shut down these engines really quick because there's something special about this aircraft. So, shutting down. Look at that. A couple of pairs of props so each engine drove a pair of contra rotating four blade control pitch propellers now this had better performance and stability but start her back up was complex and problematic there we go imagine how prob how complex this is you have a, a drive shaft Think of your lawnmower, if you have a lawnmower, or a string trimmer, if you have a string trimmer, whatever. You have, a, you have a shaft on the engine. It's spinning in one direction, but you have to make a device attached to it spin in the opposite direction. It's pretty complex, especially for 1940s, early 1940s technology. Let's get in our cockpit. Let's get off our gauges. Hmm. Oink. Ah. That was actually, those, those gauges actually look better than I thought. I was kind of expecting, like, you know, some of the, the less nice-looking gauges, honestly. Oh, man. Spoilers. Okay, I've got spoilers. Flaps. I do have flaps. Well, that's good. Let's put them out and see what they look like. Now, look at that. That's a full-length... All right, let's pop the uh, air. Oh, look at those air brakes. Nice. All right, let's put that back in. Okay, let's get back inside. All righty, I'm dropping the brakes off. We're gonna run up our two Pratt Whitney R4360 31 28 cylinder radials producing 3000 horsepower piece. Holy moly, <laughs> it's like flying a rocket ship. Where's our speed? Oh, we just blew through 200 miles per hour. Woo! Wow. Fast. <laughs> that was the requirement. It was supposed to be fast. Wow. Oh, we just we've gone through 300 miles an hour. Okay, I need to I need to pull off. We're going to go down to uh 35 on our manifold pressure. There we go. Okay. Now, 100 of these aircraft were ordered for delivery in 1944. We're going to go for a little cruise here over wherever we are. All right, yeah, we'll go this way. 100 were ordered for 1944. The thing with Hughes Aircraft Corporation, they weren't known for being able to work in metal. The Spruce Goose is a wooden aircraft. The aircraft before this was a wooden aircraft. In fact, the GAO, the Government Accountability Office, made sure that there was a requirement built into this aircraft saying it had to be made of metal. They were so concerned that Hughes just wouldn't be able to do it. Initial flight tests showed issues with ailerons at low speed. Probably due to just not having enough aileron 
for the size of the aircraft. Now, the first prototype of this aircraft was actually lost. It crashed. Howard Hughes was a bit of an eccentric, eccentric fellow. I can't speak. <laughs> he was nuts. He was nutters. I mean, yeah, he did great things with... Oh, I can't remember the airline he owned. One trip owned Pan Am. Hughes owned TWA. I can't remember off the top of my head. He, but he was crazy. The man was a nutball. And I actually read a book about the end of his life. But he took off with the prototype aircraft, which was con contra rotating props, all of that. I thought I saw smoke coming off that engine. Um, and he was flying north when one of the engines had a runaway. And you get that from time to time. The contra rotating device actually was causing a runaway. Instead of fly following proper procedures that the Hughes Aircraft Corporation had set forth to deal with emergencies like this and immediately landing, he instead continued flying trying to solve the problem. That's a really bad idea when you're in an airplane. Just saying. I'm not a pilot. I know that. I mean, yes, I've been in many planes in the co-pilot seat, you know, Cessna 152s and stuff like that, but you don't do that kind of silly stuff. Well, by the time the problem became so severe that he had to land the aircraft, he had nowhere to go. He tried to make a landing at a golf course, clipped the house, crashed the aircraft, almost killed himself, and lost the plane. The plane was destroyed. All right, let's hit our buttons really quick here. So shift one, black screen of death, okay. So shift one causes a black screen. That's, that's helpful. Shift two, shift three, four, five, six. Wow. So quite literally, I don't have a GPS. I have to do every bit of nav by looking out my window and by uh, old school style or being lucky and knowing I'm going in a circle. So there's the near field over there. Cool. All right, so no GPS, um, no radio. Is there really? There's, there's no radio on this aircraft. That's a problem. I would expect a radio somewhere on an aircraft like this. Got to go for that airfield or that airfield or what airfield. I guess it doesn't really matter. I'll just go for any airfield. Whatever. All right. So this aircraft eventually lost out to the RB-50 Super Fortress and the Northrop F-15 Reporter. Uh, it was found that conversions of the B-29 into a, a photo recon aircraft, which was became the uh, RB-50, and then the F-15 Reporter, not to be confused with the F-15 Eagle, completely different aircraft. They were found to be better aircraft, and of course, the whole concept of prop aircraft as photo recon was quickly kiboshed when they realized that missiles would blow them up. So then you moved on to the U-2, the SR-71, and on into satellites. Um, so really, it was um, it was an aircraft doomed for obsolescence pretty fast. Still, look at this. Thing. It has a 5,000 mile range, by the way. It's a beautiful looking aircraft. And it, it looks like a, just a big, giant, monster P-38 wannabe. All right. Going for that runway right there, assuming I can even make that. All right, let's uh, pop some air brakes. All right. I kind of got to watch my speed. I want to land an aircraft for a change instead of crashing them every time. It is very difficult to uh, commentate, talk about the aircraft, history of the aircraft, give you guys outside views, inside views, all around views, and uh, still not crash the aircraft. The nice thing is this, this nice little um, metal bar up the center of my, my cockpit here really does help. 
I'll line that up on the runway and just kind of fly down the slope. We got her mostly throttled back. Nice thing is also, you know, like I've said before, with these kind of aircraft, when you, uh, when you think about it, I've got radial engines. I slam the throttle forward. My twin 28 cylinder, 3000 horsepower radials are going to get me out of here. I'm going to be able to bug out pretty darn fast. So, look at that. That's a short, short runway. Where am I landing, I wonder? I don't even know. Look at that. Just a big aircraft. And I, I have not, I, I have not found any place that has one of these aircraft. No museums or anything. I think they've been lost forever. Um, I think this is what, an, an instance where the only chance you're going to have to be around this aircraft is here on Flight Simulator. Do we have reversing? I wouldn't expect that reversing. No. All right, let's see if we can actually make it before the end of the runway. Come on, stop, stop. Oh, that's the end of the runway. Baby, stop, 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 stop. Oh, please. I, I don't know why, but I'm, con I'm like squeezing the brake trigger harder. No, even though I know that that's I can do. Okay. Oh, oh, come on, come on. Come on. Oh yeah, just barely. Ah. Uh, yeah. So this is one of those aircraft that I, I haven't found. If you guys can find where a museum has one of these, even a reproduction of them, I would love to go see it in person. I mean, it just looks like... Let me put the parking brakes on. Let me shut her down. I also like the fact that it pops. When I shut it down, you get that pop of the engine. Um, that would make sense, you know? All right, I'm going to open my cockpit. Um, oh, there we go. We have a ladder. You know what? That makes sense. Now that I see the, I see it, of course. That doesn't make sense. Man, I could, I would love, I would love to be able to pull a P-38 in here and get a side-by-side -side of the two of these. Because just looking at this, this thing is massive. Massive. I couldn't imagine. I bet you it just, it just lords over a P-38. So it looks much like a P-38. Uh, link is down below as always. Um, this is a conversion, I think, from FS-2009, but it looks like a really nice conversion, a very unique aircraft. Again, if you can find one in a museum somewhere, drop a comment down below. I'd love to actually go look at it and take a real picture of it um, as opposed to a fake picture. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> till next time, I've been Dare Tabbers. This is your Flight Simulator X Spotlight. Happy flying.